Welcome to C10 Talk, your C10 truck podcast. Here's your host, Ronnie Wetch. All right, all right, all right. C10 Nation, what up, what up? How about a little SEMA recap, a little episode 117, I think. I'm going to sit up here. I got a new beer, and uh, we're going to talk SEMA, what I can remember of it at least, and uh, just kind of put it all together in one little wrap-up episode, probably be a little bit more of me just rambling, everything I can remember from... uh, I guess Sunday to Friday or Monday to to Friday, which was uh, pretty busy for me, but uh, really a good time. SEMA is a lot of fun, a lot of good people and um, just good experiences. You know, uh, Brian Stupski actually, which is Problem Child Customs, he's the guy who does the artwork for now the Johan models, which is going to be the model shirts that Sam Castronova He's partnered up with Brian Stubsky. And then Brian does a lot of the artwork with um, Dino. So let me, uh, actually, I wanted to save this name here on my Facebook messaging. But but essentially what Stubsky wrote was with all the politics and everything going on right now, he's like, man, you know, hot rodding, we just have it really good. I just spent, you know, five days at SEMA. Everybody was getting along. People were praising other people's builds, not being high, highly critical of one another. Whereas for us, I mean, for all of us, we get home and the first thing you see on TV is just the politics of everything. And unfortunately, it just absolutely wears you out. My kids, I mean, I have young kids and they're just like, Dad, when is the commercials going to stop in Arizona? They're going to have a runoff probably, so it's going to continue, and it's just absolutely, it's bullshit. I mean, it just wears you out, the politics, the slandering, the lies, and uh, unfortunately, um, that's, you know, what our country has come to, especially during political times. But what Brian said was just about how fun it all really is and how everybody gets along, and SEMA was awesome. SEMA really was awesome. We had... uh, we had a great time. Got to see people I haven't seen since last SEMA. And I highly encourage you, if you if you can, get out, make it out. You know, we try to bring you as much as we can. We try to bring you some of the different interviews, how people that we did initially interview, how they ended up doing. And really, everybody kicked ass. Everybody, you know, just probably had the show that they expected, if not more or a, a better show and the draw that you know would come from that so i'm just kind of i got it open here and i'm kind of looking at it jack frith brian vowell uh travis from pro performance they were episode uh the first episode which was like 112 all killed it travis from uh pro performance he ended up getting a great spot outside and that really reflected well on his blazer or on his bourbon i should say and uh and then jack speaking of blazers had the roadster he was outside he again was in a great spot got a ton of love kind of uh right where you would walk out to kind of more outside raceway stuff he was posted up right there with his roadster and uh, there was people around him all the time we also were able to interview him and uh, a follow-up and then we got a follow-up with mickey vowel and trey five which who built the suburban for the blues traveler which was for brian vowel who we had on as well so we had brian on who's the owner mickey the wife and then trey five was the builder now that was kicked over to the roll purple facebook channel so you can check it out there you can check out all the stuff i did whether it was on c10 talks facebook or roll purple's facebook uh, a few you know fun interviews and the Facebook, mm, I don't know. You know, you guys will have to let me know. I know when I did post it up, people are like, no, we don't want to be on Facebook. But for me, from last year, I can do these interviews. I can try to upload them, but I can just spit it out, put it on the Facebook. It's there. You get it and you get caught up. There's no commercials. There's no sponsors. There's no nothing. It's just 
bam, live on Facebook and you get it. The only other thing I think I might try next year would be uh, Jennifer, which is Lion's wife from Finish Line. She recorded a second interview that I did with Lion about the bourbon that he has, the 66 GMC. And uh, she put that damn thing on YouTube so fast. I was like, dude, you got to show me how to do that, girl. Because I interviewed him about the first truck, which is Strong Roots, which is the 78 GMC on our channel. And, uh, you know, I mean, that was killer. But then again, I, I interviewed him a second time for the 66 GMC, and it's on YouTube. So pretty cool stuff. But uh, let's see here. So that was 112, and then we did Brad McKinnon, which is R.A. Brad with his 48 bourbon. We got to see him come in, which, again, that guy grinds so hard, gets it in the Doug Thorley booth. The thing looked so rad, the colors, the root beer. You know, we talked to him. The damn thing was like this, the chassis. He throws the thing on. It's missing fenders. It's not painted. Crazy, crazy stuff. So um, the year of the bourbon. So we're kind of going to go through some of the bourbons that I have written down, uh, you know, in some of the lists that I, I put together as I'm walking around and kind of talk to you guys about it. Josh Schilling and Travis Pruis. Josh Schilling, probably if you were able to gauge a level of what he expected and what he received, I would think Josh Schilling and the Pro 10, the official Pro 10, probably had the best SEMA. He was kind of out on the south side, but it's really a racy style area where they have all like open track, trucks jumping tire burning, smoking, just smell, fuel, everything. And uh, Josh was on the other side. He was by uh, an old like Daytona that kind of matched his truck. And that couldn't have been better for both of those guys. I think really positioning those two, that ended up working out really good for those two because they were right next to one another. I posted a pic of the uh, the Daytona. I can't remember. They had another kind of scrap Tona uh, that they put together. And uh, again, Josh, I think, just absolutely felt like he probably had the SEMA he expected, if not more. We did do a live interview with him on Facebook Live as well. Uh, seven, eight, nine, going back off my memory, which is going to be, uh, number four of the, of the series that we did. That's, uh, Robbie and I'm trying to think who the hell else I had on there for that one. Take a swig of beer. Who the hell did I interview with Robbie? That's crazy. He just freaking goes so fast. Um, it'll come to me because I did go around and, and do some other killer interviews throughout the week. And then we finished it off with the square buddy syndicate guys, SSO two. And of course, Joe, Rob, Broey, Sam, they killed it. Royal purple booth. We were around them. They had the, the reveal. Oh, that was lion. Lion was, was one of those guys in the seven, eight, nine. And I'm forgetting somebody else. So I'm trying to think of it as I, uh, as a yap or, Oh, Waylon. So Waylon from TMI. Oh, damn. That was one of the, I love that truck. I love that hood and what he ended up doing with that Chevelle, that 67 Chevelle SS that worked out really tastefully. So that was Robbie, that was Waylon and that was Lion. So we were able to pretty much interview all those guys and check in with them. And, uh, that was, that was awesome. Now Waylon over the TMI booth, that was probably one of the first trucks I went to go see because I did want to see that that hood. Now, Waylon was in and out. It was funny because every time I'd go by there, I would now one time I went by, he was there and then I came back to say what's up and he was gone and then he was gone again. And uh, we finally got to kind of meet up, but it was really quick. So um, let's see. What else do I have down here? Creative Customs, which is Mark. Let's see if I don't slaughter this. Gio Jimbavo, I have to say that is his mom said it really. She said it. I interviewed him. He was in the oh, kind of like an aftermarket product booth. Mark Jimbavo, I have to say it like that. Jimbavo, he was uh, he was there with his 67, and he I don't think he thought he was gonna make it, wasn't sure. I think at whatever point you'll hear on the interview, I did interview him. Please go check it out, Facebook Live on the C10 Talk page, they figured out, they kind of totaled the hours. And he's like, listen, I'm going to total up the hours. And if we can push everything else to the side and we can average, you know, 16 hour work weeks, you know, seven of my guys, they did the math, multiply times, whatever, you know, put it all together. And it was like, boom, we can make it. And then his wife pretty much drives out while he sleeps 36 hours from Pennsylvania. 
Uh, I'm assuming that he's very glad that he did because they won the, you know, uh, good guys gold bar and then they won the GM performance. Now, it wasn't the GM performance truck of the year. That was went to premiere for their tri five. And damn, son, that thing was freaking oh you come around the corner and you're like holy shit so premiere does amazing work they had that uh, white oh snow white frost looking truck that won at c10 nationals and it was also on the cover of street trucks so premiere out of lake havasu kills it absolutely stunning trucks try five stuff right now that they're building that was on a gsi frame and then uh, you know working my way over to see mark and his 67. Uh, Probably one of my top three trucks of SEMA. Probably even, you know, close one, two, right there. Definitely uh, like that truck. So, (coughs) sorry. I have a little cough right now. Um, I have no intentions to even edit this. This is going straight out. So, coughs and whatever you're getting, you're getting. Mark, congrats to you and Heather. Uh, You guys, stunning truck. Thank you for taking the time to... Uh, sit down with C10 Talk or stand up, I guess, because he was getting ready to go to dinner and I grabbed him and was able to do that interview. But uh, Creative Customs, make sure you check that one out. And Mark Jimbavo, uh, really a, a beautiful, beautiful truck. Let me make sure. Let me flip over here and make sure I'm getting that to you right. But, uh, oh, Creative. It's going to pop up. Nope, not there. I'm probably spelling it wrong. Creative Custom. What the hell? It's not coming up. Um, Creative Rod and Custom. There it is. Creative Rod and Custom. Mark Jimbavo. So uh, this truck, check it out online. Check it out on their Instagram. Uh, It was also on a roaster shop chassis, so they were part of the best on uh, RS, which is a super cool we took a detour, and yeah, now they're up in Colorado. So, hell yeah, dude, you freaking worked your ass off. So, um, check it out. Check it out online. They won, again, the uh, GM Performance for, it was for best use of use of parts, I believe is what he said. So, again, Premier won best truck, and then uh, Mark and Heather and their shop, Creative Rod and Customs, out of Pennsylvania, won uh, best use of parts, and then the good guys, Gold, uh, award and also you know mark and his wife were out in oh or so yeah 2016 for the same they had a 68 that they built and that was in the amsoil booth and uh, we interviewed them and i think that's one of those honestly that made it to video and we have the video and i never loaded it to youtube because uh the amount of time and i just never got around to it so maybe i'll do that speaking of loading stuff to youtube again i told you guys i was going to be all over the board Roll Purple last year, I did some interviews for them, and they never really were released. So I reached out to them and said, get me that stuff so I can release them, because I felt like I had a couple really cool interviews. The Ring Brothers, first time I met them, a lot of fun. We talked about a lot of Blazer stuff. And then, lo and behold, the Ring Brothers bring a Blazer, a 71, uh, you know, in Ring Brothers fashion, stunner. Nothing too crazy, just uh, kind of adhering to the traits that a K5 Blazer would have, especially a 71. I mean, it's all there. And I was able to reach out to them, interview them for a podcast that will come in your way uh, soon, that will be coming your way soon. So uh, that was a lot of fun hanging out with those guys. They are an easy, fun interview. Uh, They have a lot of... uh, you know they're 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 loose they're they're definitely not uh, uptight by any means wisconsin boys spring green i think it is and uh and they act the uh, they act just that way man just fun guys who i really connect with at least i feel like i do i enjoy talking to them i enjoy listening to them and uh and they built some rad shit and so because 1969 50 years 2019 next year they uh they kind of talk about on the interview that they have like three to four builds that they're going to be bringing to SEMA 2019 so SEMA 2019 could be pretty pretty crazy pretty awesome so um SBS obviously square body syndicate SSO2 Tuesday was uh fun because we had so many reveals and SBS was one of those, and uh, they brought down the house. Uh, Tim Strange opened it up. Uh, they took the cover off, and there was a crowd around that truck pretty much the whole week. 
obviously, you know, you look at the racing, you look at that kind of that impact striping that they have. Um, you look at those wheels, you look at the interior, you look at the motor. And uh, I think when you when you blend that whole thing, I mean, the turbines alone will draw you in. And then Yezzy and SBS and uh, Hubcap and the metalwork, you, the whole thing comes together. What a square body. Uh, you'll hear, you can jump on the pre-interview that I did with those guys, and uh, you can just kind of look around and see the truck itself. So many different pictures. I know Kevin Aguilar from Street Trucks, previous editor-in-chief, now runs Fuelish. He did some pictures, and I think that that truck will be seen soon in a street truck coming uh, to you soon. So that, that'll be nice. And then they did the model giveaway, which is the model shirt. It's a model box, but uh, looks kind of like a model, but it's a model box, has all the sponsors and all the different layouts on it. And then it has a shirt inside of it. So that's something that Sam Castronova and Brian Stubsky of Problem Child Customs uh, unveiled. And uh, I believe they're going to have another one, which cat out of the bag maybe a little soon but angelo which was sam's truck that he had dell build he talks about it on the interview that i had with him and then stubsky uh drew so that will be number two of the the model t-shirt box giveaway or and or sales that you'll be able to get I believe he's going to sell them at the get down. So, so uh, I'll keep you posted on that, especially if I have uh, a chance to talk to Sam or get anything out on that. Stay tuned on social media if you're uh, if you're going to start collecting those. I don't fault you because they're uh, they're pretty special. They're pretty neat. Um, I was kind of going through the trucks, uh, skipping back to the days. So, like Monday, just to kind of give you guys an example, Monday. You can't, if you're media, you can't get in on Monday. Uh, they Rightfully so. They probably don't want you taking a bunch of pictures while everybody's setting up. But because I was, you know, double dipping and doing stuff for Roll Purple, uh, I have an exhibitor badge, and so I can get in. Well, Monday is probably my favorite day because Monday, you kind of have that behind-the-scenes, mm, I guess, feel. And people are setting up their booths. You get a look at trucks that are going to, you know, they're not right. They're not covered yet. So you really get, uh, and you could talk to people, you know, they're busy, so you don't want to be rude and take up their time, but you can definitely kind of get a feel for things. And people, they're somewhat joyous because they're there. They made it, they made it with their truck, um, you know, and, and it's one of those things where it, it has a good low key feel to it. And then Tuesday comes and you're like, oh man, gates are open. It's like the Kentucky Derby. I mean, everybody you're like, holy shit, I got to leave early. And then you have to get through security. So it's, it, then it gets kind of gets crazy Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, and then Friday, you're just so exhausted. You're just like, I'm done. Whatever I can get done, I'll get done. I'll, I'll talk to people and, and make as much happen. I, I felt like Friday, I was like, I want a whole nother day. But uh, Monday was good. Tuesday was, was, I mean, Tuesday was great just because we had so many unveilings. You had uh, Joe and then you had um, Craig Piggott from River City Rods. Now, Craig had the B100. A B100 is kind of like a Suburban, but it's a Ford and it's a dent side. Let me take that back. It's, yeah, uh, yeah, dent side versus a bump side. So I, I'm going to say that this thing is, I guess, dent sides are like 73 to, I think, 80, 81. I'm going to say this thing's like a 76. It's a Suburban style, you know, Ford. And they chopped the top off. It had these huge, just rad ass red billets, red interior, had kind of a gray uh, paint. The best part of it, again, about positioning was they were right next to Roll Purple's booth. So you had the B100 in the energy suspension booth. And then right next to that, you had Joe and Square Body Syndicate and SSO2 in the Roll Purple booth. So that worked really well because they were kind of able to feed off one another. So, you know, SBS had their unveiling at 1030 and then at 11 was going to be uh, Craig River City Rods. I think they might even have bumped it up because we had a pretty good crowd. Royal Purple did. SBS did around uh, the truck. So it's like, hey, all these people are here. The PA's here. Let's let's do it up. And Tim Strange led that off 
for uh, Royal Purple and the booth and Square Body Syndicate. And then a little bit, you know, an hour later at like 1130 was the Ring Brothers and they were right there as well. So it really worked out well for me because I'm not running all over the place. Um, we did try to get to Lion from Finish Line. He ends up getting sick. It turns out he ends up getting like a food poisoning. I think he ate uh, some hamburger, he said. And uh, he ended up spending that day Tuesday in the hospital. So we tried to get to him that morning before Joe's unveiling on SSO2 and it just didn't work. And his wife, Jennifer's like, don't worry about it. I'm taking his ass to the hospital. Uh, let's do it tomorrow. And that, that worked out great too, because for whatever reason, we have a little tradition with the first truck, which is the MC 10, which is the red and white square that was in the Covercraft booth. Then the BC 30, which was his GMC 67, 68, 69, I think it might've been 69, long bed dually, and then this truck, and the views are really good when we do the unveiling with those guys, so we kind of have been keeping that tradition alive. Um, Just kind of going through, Tuesday was, uh, it was crazy. We were lucky. We got invited to the Magnuson uh, Superchargers. Uh, they did some kart racing, so I got to hang out with some of the boys that night and do some kart racing. For the audience, SEMA is not just during the day. There's a lot going on at night. Obviously, Vegas, there's always an after party, and uh, you can somewhat choose. Well, what do I want to do tonight? What have I been invited to? Have I been invited to too many things? Do I just want to chill? I'm sure some people, at times, I was uh, roomed up with my boy Goose and Kevin Stickle, and you just get back to your room, and you pop a cold one, and you're like, dude, I, I just want to sit on the couch and chill out. And then you get your second win, and you're like, all right, so many you know people are going here, or we're doing this. Tuesday, we were able to go out and do some kart racing with the uh, Magnuson crew, which was a ton of fun. Aaron and Dusty, thank you so much for that. It actually ended up turning into kind of a game a thon. We were playing uh, air hockey, foosball, pop a shot, uh, all kinds of different games. This quarterback game, we turned their little rec room into a uh, kid zone. It reminded me of being in, you know, my buddy's basement and when I was you know 14 years old and all the shenanigans we just happened to have beer and pizza so it kind of worked out but <clears throat> I did lose my voice of course I usually lose it at least once I think I found it again and uh, because I have this cough now I feel like I'm about ready to lose it again just talking to you guys right now so uh, kind of working my way through Tim Strange hats off to you buddy you did such a good job he led the uh, SBS unveiling for Roll Purple and then he actually was the host and MC for the Roadster Shop I'm sure uh, if you're listening to this a lot of different people were posting up stuff best on RS that was the best on Roadster Shop chassis and they had an after party and it was uh, Thursday Boy, uh, honored to get invited, and they did a great job. They gave awards out. They gave raffles out. They they had so much fun. And the cool thing, I did talk to Phil. Now, the, Phil and Jeremy have been on the show. I talked to him at the show, and I just wanted to give him heads up or kudos because – they really represented a lot of different companies. It wasn't just Roadster Shop. They had other companies that were sponsoring awards, and they mentioned other companies. And kind of going back to what Stubsky said, it's 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 a group effort. It's a team effort, and people are working together. And you've got a ton of suspension companies and exhaust companies and wiring companies. And you have so many different uh, entities, but ultimately hot rodding automotive and they did a really good job showcasing all that we had a blast at that party uh sbs did win the social media which was cool for joe and the gang then uh goolsby won like third and that was like a duster and probably one of my favorite cars i did post it on c10 talks instagram it uh it was kind of a really light tan uh, with the, just the right amount of uh, striping, and then the interior was retro 70s rad, kind of had that tan with your orange, your yellow, your red, uh, really a, a nice, well-put-together car. That was, I think, like kind of third, and then there was a Maverick, forgetting the builder right now. He got second. That thing was blowing everybody away. And then Kindigit won the whole best on RS, which was uh, the Mercedes like Goldwing-style car. Um, is that what it is? Wing, gold wing? You know, the wings kind of, the doors kind of flop up. It was, uh, it was badass. It was in the back. I'm trying to think whose booth it was in. Uh, Odyssey Batteries had a really well put together booth. It was, uh, they had a Chevelle convertible, like a 70 Chevelle convertible by East Bay Motors. Oh, that thing was so nice. And then they had a Mustang that had a Ferrari motor in it. We were making jokes like, is it the 
frosting or was it the ma must rari we were coming up i mean we were we weren't even drinking we were just probably exhausted but uh two of those cars in the odyssey booth big old booth wide open and uh hats off to those guys because they did it you know a booth you know some of these guys have just killer booths and roll purple for that matter has such a great booth too because they're like in the thick of it you know you think about where the location is now central hall is that's just the happening part of of sema central hall hot rod alley there's a lot going on now you can go upstairs to south you're gonna get a lot of your four-wheel drive stuff you're gonna have a lot of tire stuff there was some guys in the like blue lot they kind of they probably weren't too happy about it now that was going to be outside outside in like an extra lot i know uh trey five jeremy was out there with his blazer lion was out there with both the 78 gmc strong roots and the gmc robbie cartel was out there even our tech was out there now our tech was in the nitto booth last year which i mean he took the world you know by storm with uh, the duke and the he was kind of just pushed to the outside out there but honestly when you think about even those trucks and there was i mean a hundred more it was it was outside and it was kind of out of the way but i tell you what they had a cool ass car show going out there i mean a lot of cool big trucks jeeps four-wheel drives and there was even more c10 so uh what's his name tyler tyler dean tyler dane his dad does the uh the remanufacturing for all the all the cool coke machines and everything uh if you think of pawn stars his dad is the guy that does all that his name's tyler he were he's on the show too he's got a square body that's kind of like white with turquoise it's a uh, right hand drive it was out there that was a cool truck glad to see that truck a lot a lot of seat tents i will say <clears throat> i will say you're going to see more fords than i had seen in a long time some dent sides some bump sides um, so yeah, Fords are coming on a little bit. You, you know, you see a few more Fords than you had. I'd say the C10s was about a, the same, the same amount as you, you know, I saw in, in 17. I do think the difference between 15 to 16 and then 17, there was a big jump. So 15 trucks, 16 more trucks, 17 C10s everywhere, 18 just about the same. I don't think it, there was a dip. I think it was just about the same. Uh, I tried to write down a bunch of them. Uh, in the flow booth, you had the uh, 64 that was a really clean truck. Uh, that was built by Fat Fender Garage. There was a truck outside that was built by Shine, uh, Jimmy Shine, uh, 67. I wanted to take more time to look at that. That was one of my favorite trucks. Uh, 67 C10, small window. Now, AccuAir has the car corral. They had two C10-ish, you know, trucks. They had Brian Val Suburban, and then uh, they had the Murder Nova, his Blazer, his K5 Blazer that was really a lot of people around it, tastefully done. It is funny because uh, Brady from Left Coast, uh, his truck, White Noise, was a lot like the K5, the two-wheel drive that uh, Murder Nova did. And uh, they were kind of, actually, when I came upon them, they were together and they were giving each other shit. And, you know, I think Murder Nova told them, hey, this is what I'm doing with my Blazer. And, it, you know, it's probably going to be here next year. But uh, it would be cool to see those two next to one another because it's literally like his and hers, you know, style C10, 67, 68, and then the K5 two-wheel drive Blazer. That was in AccuAir. AccuAir always does a really good job. They had a great variety this year. They had a Bentley. They had a Caddy. They had some, you know, they had a newer truck. And then in their booth, they had a Caddy, an old school Caddy. You know, it's, I mean, so a lot of variety and, uh, and you, I don't think you're going to lose with that. You know, having variety is a good thing. Squares out front. Oh, this was, uh, our buddy, uh, Provast, uh, he had his red truck and then, uh, Broken Bones had the blue and white truck, which was a square, all uh, both sitting on chopping block. They were outside and, uh, Metal Ox cut it down. Broken Bones put it together. They're out of, uh, well, Queen Creek out here, uh, kind of East Valley, Phoenix. And, uh, those, those, uh, those trucks were rad. I really like the Broken Bones truck because it's just, it's all natural, man. It's all patinaed. It's blue. It's white. It's just got, it's got scars on it. It's got, you know, love on it. It's been through, it's been through some shit and, uh, it's rolling on that chopping block and interior is completely redone. Beautiful houndstooth. Um, something that you'd really enjoy driving and, and having a good time. 
So uh, that truck was fun. I think it got a lot of love. I think, you know, being outside kind of on the main walkway, it, it's going to get a lot of love. And it, and it did. I know uh, Christy Lee, I think, posted it. And then Pony had his red GMC, which is like 67, 68 out there. Boy, I tell you what, that sun comes up and bam, that thing is just nailing that uh, that truck, that paint, that color. And then even at night, that truck looked well. It had some lights on it. So Pony's red GMC. Uh, Sean's Provast, a red square, which is a 7374, and then the Broken Bones, 7374, both sitting on chopping block. And I think Ponies is on chopping block too. So chopping block kind of had them all set up there. Ran into Vince and Joe, which is chopping block. Always a good time. Let's see. Who else do I got here? Redemption. We were able to talk to Jack. Um, I have this down as Shane Simpson, and that's that West Tech. So what it is with those guys, they brought a 64 to 66 last year. And what it is is it's a group of kids that he gets from his school, and they literally are building you know, a truck. And this year they had a blazer. So every morning, the way I would walk in, I end up going through all the like paint and stuff paint and you know paint booths and frame straighteners and so more of that uh, that automotive I guess painting you know the, the the tooling and all that and that's where I would see Shane the the blazer this year and last year it was the truck because I go through so early in the morning I'd always miss them and uh, I really would like to get this guy on the show because they did a really good job we've interacted since on social media and what he sent me for that blazer, there was literally like not even a full tub. It was like, hey, here's the firewall. Here's the A post going up into, you know, the top of the you know, the blazer kind of connecting. And then about like, almost to the B post. And that's about it. The floorboard, everything else, like no rockers, no nothing. I mean, for what they did and the amount of work that they did, uh, I can't imagine in the story. And he's he's a tech school. So they did that last year with, again, I think it was 64 to 66, well received. And then this year with the Blazer, full drive Blazer. And it looked really nice. So it's cool that those kids up there, he's out of Iowa. Those kids are getting that experience, and he's putting them through that. So speaking of Iowa, our buddy Stoner brought two Suburbans. He bought a Tri-5 Suburban. That was in the Mobile One booth. That thing was uh, a lot of uh, really tasteful, really high class. It kind of – it's one of those things where Stoner brings a lot of um, – he likes the patina, and he really has perfected that. But then this, this uh, Tri-5 got painted. Him and his boys came out, Bob and Cody and the whole whole clan, Barn Fine. And then they brought a Advanced Design Suburban, more patina, probably one of my favorites. I really like the patina. I like um, R.A. Brad's, and I love the root beer. I just, that patina is just, I feel like the root beer is like too classy for me. I like the patina because I feel like that's something I could drive and not have to uh, not have to stress about it. Either way, those two killed it with their burbs. Speaking of patina, I'll tell you the truck that I freaking love was... Uh, Wolf Design, Eric Wolf, and he had a good balance. He kind of had this inlaid copper with these uh, spoke wheels and uh, OG bumper, the right color, the sheriff. It has cab lights. It has uh, kind of one of those center uh, control lights that you can, you know, most of the time you'll see them on an A post and uh, you can, you know, kind of like uh, we literally do have them in the fire truck. So it's something where it's like kind of a spotlight. It's in the center of this truck and uh, they just killed it. Interiors on point, you know, all the little accents on point. And when you take a patina truck and you accent it with, you know, the right touches and the new modern interior and everything else, it just pops. And this truck was outside and uh, kind of underneath in the shade, but still getting the sunlight that it deserved. And uh, again, one of those trucks where you walk up on it and you're like, damn, son, just uh, well done. Well done. Some guys were dubbing it the uh, the year of the burb. I've got uh, R.A. Brad in his root beer float. I've got the B100, although that's a Ford. That's kind of a Suburban. Stoner times two. Finish line 66 GMC. Joey G., the man out of Tucson, he was in the GSI booth. He had kind of a faux Tina style Tri-5 burb, really turquoise uh, really clean. A lot of people around that. Travis at Pro Performance had his bourbon, his 64. Uh, Brian Val had his 69-ish with the uh, 67, 68 front, front uh, hood and clip. And who else do I have here? Oh, Roll Purple, because Roll Purple, because Tim Strange put together uh, that uh, 61 or 2 
suburban panel and it was in the royal purple booth and it's perfect because tim reed did the whole damn thing and uh he he went with the old school 15s it's got the lingenfelter uh motor intake and uh, i think it's lingenfelter motor with a holly intake and i mean just stunning stunning it's it's one of those things where a lot of these sema builds if you saw the build in you know the parking lot at a, your local show it would stop you in your tracks but by tuesday wednesday you're you're practically numb to it all because it's all overload because there's so much rad stuff i mean it's like rad shit there rad shit there damn son look at that holy shit look at that oh my god i can't believe you did that and it, it really doesn't stop i know there was like this og rusty tow truck up by chopping block AccuWare that was done by welder up and he killed it and there was people around it all the damn time so there's uh there's obviously a little bit for everybody uh blue lot i talked about that okay how about this coming in to you know the the area every morning like i said i'd go buy more of the paint stuff well the 3m is where foos was and foos built the c28 in 1967 and he's kind of saying hey what if if gm would have done instead of a z28 or they would have offered a sport truck they would have done a c28 tastefully done foos didn't do anything crazy but it was uh it was rad and it was one of those things where he just does a few little things i know the front bumper kind of had a little little change to it he's a big bumper guy it does seem from overhaul and he's always moving those bumpers around he had a really cool spid build sheet that he had taped on the uh, on the uh, driver's side or passenger side or both sides. Hell, I don't know. I took a picture of it, posted it up. A lot of little touches that Chip did. The truck was well-received. 3M booth. Cool to see Foos get behind a, a C10. And like I said, and then you had uh, Jimmy Shine do the same thing. So uh, these big-time builders are building C10s, and the C10 movement is uh, doing one thing, kicking ass. Fat Fender 72 that was out back. We interviewed him. Another really tastefully not overdone uh, 72, orange and white. You know, that's a little bit of my kryptonite there. That was an interview that we did on our Facebook Live. I saw somebody post a 69 to 70, like orange and white, uh, four-wheel drive K20 with a diesel. I didn't see it in person. I wish I would have. So if you've seen that and you know more about it, please send it to me. C10 race truck, which was, we talked a little bit about Josh and the love that he got. Even a few Fords caught my eye. Like I said, I took a few pictures of that. Robbie Cartel was in the back. And then Tanner from Radfab, he was included in the um, the Battle of the Builders. I don't, obviously he didn't win it, but he did uh, He did well. He did represent, and, uh, and that truck got a lot of love. There was a camper in the back, kind of like Yellowstone, but it was a, 69 to 72 and it was completely redone and it was more of an rv transformation company but they redid that whole interior it was pretty rad it reminded me a lot of uh craig piggott's river city c30 from last year um kind of tucked around the corner but really uh really a fun truck uh let's see here what else do i have here got to run into stacy david which was cool because stacy and i had interviewed uh, i had interviewed him earlier in the year time for another swig here I had interviewed Stacy earlier in the year and, uh, you know, hadn't really met him. So once we shook hands and talked a little bit, he was, uh, he was, he was a good dude, man. Kind of fun to talk to them. I took out some, some cards for Frito-Lay. That's my 1971 C30 that's going to have the 12 valve Cummins. So I did make some cards that, uh, I passed around and, you know, kind of working some of the sponsorship for that truck. I don't know if that truck's going to be, a SEMA build. I don't know that I'm really a SEMA builder. I know Johnny G is going to help me and uh, I've got some really killer sponsors behind the build. Um, I just don't know that it's a SEMA build. We'll see. We'll see if I can get that done along with wrapping up my house remodel and and everything else. So just add it to the list. But uh, Stacy and I were able to talk a little bit about Frito-Lay. He dug it. He thought it was pretty cool. And he's a Dukes of Hazard fan. So there's you know, you know a little bit of Cooter's Garage with Frito-Lay. Our girl Katie was in the booth. Probably one of the best. Uh, I don't know. She's the girl next door. She's she's the, she's the real deal. She uh, is always so nice to talk to. Fun to interact. And C10 Nation Day, which was Thursday. Roll Purple puts that on. Helps me, you know, I mean, they really help 
together. We worked together. C10 Nation Day, C10 Talk Day, gave out like over 250 shirts, which had SSO2 on them. And, uh, and Katie comes in for a kind of a traditional picture with the whole gang. Everybody's around the truck that's in the booth. And this is the second time it's been a square body syndicate truck. SSO one was the first one SSO two. Um, and when you look back and you, you look back, not only from today, looking back, you know, last week, um, I'm honored and cherished in the, the, that moment honored that I was involved with it. And then I think it's one of those things when you look back, you know, five, 10 years, you'll, you'll always remember that time and C10 nation day roll purple. Thank you so much for hosting it and allowing us to do it in your booth. And hopefully for 2019, there's a C10 in there as well. And we can continue that along uh, group pick Katie, the whole nine yards, because, uh, it's a fun time. It really is a fun time. And I'll tell you this, C10 Nation, you guys showed up. I mean, we gave out those shirts. Granted, free shirts always helps, but we had people, it started at 11. We had people showing up like at 10. I was like, did I post this wrong? Did I tell people the wrong time? It was crazy. But that was also fun because we got to interact with everybody that was in the booth and talk to them. And some of the bigger players in the C10 community showed up. They were there. You had John Oro. You had Dell. You had Dino. You had Yezzy. You could talk to him about the truck. Uh, Sam was there. So uh, thank you all for who were able to come and uh, and support C10 Nation Day. And again, thank you, Roll Purple, for allowing us to do that in your booth and kind of keeping that going. Christy Lee was in the booth on Wednesday. She's been a guest of the show. And uh, it was fun. I got to interview her for Roll Purple. And so that was cool. I did wish I had a little bit more time to interview Tim Strange. Now, I did come across a, a Mopar media thing that they did, which was announcing that uh, 426, they're calling the Elephant, And that's going to be a crate motor that you're able to get. So they did a huge unveiling thing. And it's actually hilarious. I stumble on this thing. I've got my phone. I left my bipod or my monopod back at the Royal Purple booth. I'm like, well, hell, I might as well. I'm here. I might as well post it up. I'm on the Royal Purple channel, Facebook. I hold up the phone, and then I realize not only am I going to probably run out of battery, but there's no way that I can hold this phone for as long as I have to because as I'm sitting there, I start to hear people say, well, they're going to do it at 426, hashtag 426. Everything's 426. It's announcing this car that they put a 426 in and then the 426 crate motor that's underneath this drape You know that they're going to unveil. Uh, it's like 345. So I end up holding the phone for 43 minutes and my arms are like numb. I'm practically shaking. I'm having to like tuck my arms in because I, I don't want to move. And it was just funny because I'm reading the comments and they're like, you know, tell the guy to shut up, which is me because I'm trying to repeat whatever the guy on the stage is saying, because I don't know if they can hear him or not. And uh, the comments are just absolutely entertaining and hilarious. And there's keyboard warriors everywhere out there. And you just have to kind of take it with a grain of salt. But it's pretty funny. And I was starting to get pretty damn tired. But uh, I think I held it for like 43, 44 minutes. It's got a ton of views. And it's one of those things where I just happen to be at the right place at the right time. And I'm glad I was there. And it, it was a lot of fun because I got to uh, interact with some of those Mopar people a little bit and talk to them. And uh, Mopar did a good job. They had beer after. Uh, they had the place packed. I mean, they had a huge booth, huge area. Um, but uh, it was just good times. SEMA, you never know what the hell you're going to run into. You never know who you're going to run to or what, what you're going to see next. Uh, Facebook, C10 Talk, I talked a little bit about that. So I did do three interviews that will also come out following this on the pod. Now, uh, as I'm doing that, I'm thinking in my mind, I need to tell you guys about who this is sponsored by because I'm not even going to edit this. So this is sponsored to you by Brothers Trucks, brotherstrucks.com. And uh, I was able to run into Jim from Brothers, hung out with him a little bit. You know the deal. I've been buying my parts from Brothers Trucks for, you know, 20 years. Brotherstrucks.com, anything from 1947 to 87, you need it. They got it. If they ain't got it, let them know and they'll get it. And uh, that's it. Restoration, what are you doing? Give them a call. Let them know how they can help you from interior, exterior, metal, bed, wood, whatever you need. Check them out, brotherstrucks.com. Now, Marque, uh, they unveiled their square body trim. We did a whole segment with them, went over to their booth, talked a little bit about their, their new trim that they're going to be offering. Made US of A from US of A Steel in Oklahoma at the Marque factory. They have like 19 different dyes they made just to make this 
new trim. Uh, you square body guys know it's been a long time, you know, coming. It's here. It's going to be available. You can pre-order now. I think it's at squarebodymolding.com, squarebodymolding.com. You can get it and uh, get in line because they're going to start delivering or essentially shipping at the first of the year. So get your order in. What do you need? What do you want? Check out the webpage, squarebodymolding.com. I assume, and I haven't checked, but I assume Mark K has, uh, has a link on their, their website because it is Mark K, Mark K.com. Remember the, or, uh, Mar dash K.com, Mar dash K.com. And there'll probably be a link to the square body molding. Uh, it's also brought to you by CPP. Our, uh, people over there, Kathy, we got a chance to interview Sadie. Sadie is Jim's daughter who owns uh, CPP, Classic Performance Products, ClassicPerform.com, ClassicPerform.com. And we interviewed Sadie. She's on the Facebook uh, Live. Talked to her a little bit about all their coilover stuff. You know, it's funny to think that how far this stuff has come. And now the coilover stuff is really popular. So uh, get online, ClassicPerform.com. You save 10% just by using C10 Talk. So if you want to save some money, you're looking to upgrade your suspension, your steering, your column, your control arms, your spindles, ClassicPerform.com has it. Your gearboxes, your braking. Big brakes, 13s, 14s, 6 piston, 2 piston. You need it. They got it. ClassicPerform.com. CPP. Check out the interview with Sadie. Facebook Live. C10 Talk. It's on there. And uh, she was fun. I hit her up right out of the gate. She was nervous about it. I think I even uh, asked her to do it on Monday. And she was like, "Uh, I don't know about this. I actually thought she did really well. All right. So we've got... uh, Marque, we've got Classic Performance, we've got Brothers, and we've got AccuAir. AccuAir had a beautiful booth showing off all their CVT, all their endo, how quiet that is. They're kicking butt. You heard Reno talk about it in his uh, sponsor spotlight, and that's what he did for pretty much a week last week was talk about how well endo is doing, CVT, the compressor is inside, kicking butt. You know you want it. Whether you're on-road, off-road, whatever it is, think AccuAir for the leader in air management, automotive air management. They're going to continue to kick ass. Uh, When you think about all these builds, all these builds I'm talking about, if they're running air and they're running air management, they're running AccuAir. I'm telling you right now, AccuAir.com. All right, so some sponsors. Please support those that support us. It's a no-brainer. And uh, again, so going back to those three interviews. So I was able to interview um, the Marque boys, which was a ton of fun, David and, and JD. And then I interviewed Andrew with Painless because they have a new square body updated wiring harness. So I wanted to talk to them a little bit. And then I interviewed Jim and Mike Ring, the Ring brothers. And we had a blast. I interviewed them last year for Royal Purple for a video, this year for C10 Talk because they did build a 1971 K5 Blazer. The Ring Brothers, they're into the C10s, they're into the K10s, and uh, we had a lot of fun. So those interviews will drop here coming up in the next few weeks throughout November. I'd like to get, uh, you know, one of them out before, probably the Ring Brothers out before Dino's Get Down. Dino's Get Down is November 16th. That's good guys in the Southwest here. So that'll be the 16th, 17th, and 18th over at Scottsdale. But the Get Down starts on the 15th. That's the Thursday. That's the mixer. Then the 16th, we all go to now break surf and we hang out. And then the 17th, we get together. We cruise. We do the cruise up to good guys. We go to good guys. And then after we all meet up at Twin Peaks and we have an after party. And then Sunday, pretty much people chill, eat breakfast. Some people go to good guys. Some people go home. Some people go to the airport. So it's essentially a four day event. Thursday, the mixer. Friday, the get down. Saturday, the cruise. Good guys, after party, Twin Peaks, and then Sunday, pretty much whatever you want. You want to go have uh, breakfast somewhere? Cool. You want to go to Good Guys? Cool. You want to go to the airport? You want to sleep in? Cool. It don't matter. You're going to have tons of fun. If you're coming out, let us know. We'll be there. I don't know if I'll be there Thursday, but I'll definitely be there Friday. I'll probably be working on Yellowstone. Speaking of that, Yellowstone is tore apart underneath me right now in my shop. I need to get that done. So uh, 
get down crunch, get that thing put together because I thought I was going to take it to c tens in the park, 4L80, Holly Terminator, GC cooling, CNR radiators, uh, and then I started cleaning it up because one thing leads to another and I want that engine bay to look uh, bitching. And uh, that's what I ended up doing. Now I've got like nine, I don't know, eight days to get it done. So after I wrap this up, I'll probably go downstairs and do that exact thing. Uh, builder's Guide showed up today. So the C10 Builder's Guide, this is the third one for the year. Uh, three a year is kind of what they've been kicking out. Honored to be part of it. Uh, we had Chris Hamilton on, so he talks a little bit about the experience about being on C10 Talk with uh, the experience of being on the podcast. And then also our boys at uh, Our Lifestyle, the podcast, Mike, the mayor, and then uh, Jason, ODB, our buddy out there from Florida. So uh, take a look, C10 Builder's Guide. If you don't subscribe, you probably should because you save a ton of money. A few articles in there that I was able to put together, a little coverage of the um, Get On Up, which is the Canadian version of the Get Down, kind of a fun show. And then also the final word that uh, I'm honored to put together. Now the Get On Up, I did call Chris and give him a hard time. My son took the pictures, and it says photos by Ronnie, but those photos are by none other than Payson, my son. He took the photos. I was super stoked for him to get a little uh, press out of it, and uh, they they uh, they just said the photos were by me, but they were by my son, Payson. So Payson, um, he's easy going, uh, but uh, I really was like, dang it, I wanted him to get some love on that because he deserves that. He shot the photos. He deserves the love on that, and uh, it is what it is, but... Uh, C10 Builder Guide, it's out. It's uh, jam-packed, full of awesome stuff. Metalox has got some uh, long bed to short bed stuff. He's also got some uh, six lug to five lug stuff. There's a killer K5. It's got eight lugs. It's big. It's bad. It's rad. Uh, let's see. Who owns this thing? Grant Cox took the photos. Can never go uh, wrong with Grant Cox. Uh, Oakland A's, Sean Puckett. So he must play ball or something, but... Uh, Pretty rad-ass uh, K5 Blazer, 72 K5 Blazer out of Wichita, Kansas, Sean Puckett. Big boy, big freaking rad-ass K5 Blazer. So, C10 Builders Guide, check it out. Uh, always fun to uh, see this show up to your front door. And uh, tons of reading, tons of tech, tons of info. Can't go wrong. Okay, wrapping it up, SEMA 2018. You got a few more Fords. You got uh, tons of C10s. You got uh, people that are behind us. You know, TMI had their booth together. They always represent Royal Purple, Royal Purple, Royal Purple. They did a great job. Their booth was, again, a 76 GMC and then their panel. And uh, they had me running around doing what I uh, love to do. You know, talk to people, interview people. A good time. Mm -mm -mm. We did get our keychains in. So we had more keychains uh, made. Our coffee cups and our keychains are, are in stock. So if you're looking for some of those fun stocking stuffers, c10nation.com keychains, they'll be selling over at Dino. So if you listen to this and you want a keychain, my advice to you, get it before we go to the get down. Because when you're sitting there and you're at the get down and you're in the C10 Talk, C10 Nation booth, you're like, dude. For eight bucks, I need to buy that because it's rad. It's rad ass, and uh, it's my truck. So uh, if you guys like keychains or you like your truck, check them out. It's a little uh, leather stamped front of uh, of most C tens. We we try to hit most eras, and uh, and they're doing well, just like the coffee cups. So I think that's it. I'm gonna take you guys out. I probably rambled way too long, and you guys are like, holy shit. But uh, I love to bring it to you, trying to kind of get you, give you guys kind of the idea, SEMA 2018. Thank you to Magnaflow for letting us uh, in the booth and letting us do the podcast. Our buddy Chris, who puts it all together, Roll Purple, for all your support. And all the C10 builders out there who are building, kicking ass, cranking on some of the baddest, raddest trucks ever built, ever built. The bar just continues to get higher. 2019 is going to be even better. And uh, there's no stopping us. C10 movement, C10 nation. Keep it going. You guys have a great week. I will be back next week with hopefully let's do the Ring Brothers. Let's get that one done. And then we'll be uh, ready for the get down. And then I've got a couple other uh, podcasts that I need to get out to you. You keep building. I'll keep cranking. That's it, guys. Thanks for listening. Please remember to rate and review. Please take the time to rate and review us. iTunes, 
I want to stay, you know, where I want to be on that chart. I want to stay up high. C10 Talk, rate us, review us, let us know how we're doing. All right, guys. Late. Late.